Welcome, everyone, to the Sickles Community Podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of February 2nd. Why do I keep doing this wrong, Beth? February 7th, 2023. <laughs> I've gotten the date wrong so many times. It's Groundhog Day. Again. It's been Groundhog Day oh, every time. Jesus. Jordan is living Groundhog Day. <laughs> After teaching classes today of a bunch of high school kids who had not been in school for the previous week, it felt like Groundhog Day. I won't lie. This just means my senior recital will never happen, which right now is fine. There we go. What are you playing your recital on? What instruments I, are you doing? I don't know, and that's making me very nervous. <laughs> okay, never mind. I asked the question I shouldn't ask. That's fine. Oh, With me tonight, I, I have – go ahead, Joe. I straight up didn't know we were live. I thought you were retaking it. Sorry. No, we're good. <laughs> no, we're fine. I just edited around all this stuff. With me tonight, besides, first off, I'm Jordan. I have a very froggy voice tonight, so I hope everyone enjoys that bit of audio loveliness. Go frogs. Go TCU. Go TCU. Go frogs. I've got four guests with me tonight. I've got Joey, Beth, Kate, and Kevin. Katie, how are you doing? I'm great, guys. I have my disco football with me. I'm very it's happy. so good. I, I love the disco football so much. I'm so happy. I've never seen a ball that looks like it'd be more satisfying to punt in my life. Yeah, it does look like it would be a lot of fun. Okay, I have to say, um, so my I have friends that are coming over on Sunday night for the Super Bowl, including my brother and his friends, and I know they're going to want to throw it. And it's like, these are all little stickers, and they are yeah. probably not super secure, so there's going to be a lot of rules with this. Got <laughs> it. It, might be, it might be hidden in a closet, because I cherish it that much. I, yeah, I would... I, I, I would not bring that out. No. Yeah, I, 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 feel like, I, I feel like drunk friends at the Super Bowl party are doing a punt pass and kick with that. Yeah. yeah. They're going to take it outside. It's not going to be good. I want to punt one of those into the scoreboard at the Jerry Dome. Yes. I feel like it would just look like a comet. Yeah. It's the natural. It'll be like the natural. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm thinking. It's the natural. It's exploding. We might need to make one for that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You beat me to it. That's exactly what I would do with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Joey, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm a little sick. Um, I didn't think about this before we started recording, but my cat, I have two bunnies and a cat, and that's always fun, but my cat recently had surgery and uh, has been very talkative lately and has decided to uh, set up shop right next to me, so if that's great. we hear yeah. oatmeal, I apologize, but yeah. Oatmeal's got hot takes. We'll take it. Yeah. O- oatmeal's going to say some absolutely out-of-pocket things about Andy Reid in a second. I love it. <laughs> Beth, how are you? Um, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Nothing is broken. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> God, always, always a calm day. Kevin, how are you, sir? I'm good. I completely lost track of time and spent half an hour down a rabbit hole trying to figure out if Minnesota's new co-offensive coordinator is the son of an astronaut or not. So that's what been did my you find evening. out? What did you find out? Inconclusive. Oh no! Oh um, no! His name is Gregory Harbo Jr. Harbo spelled like Harbaugh, not related to those Harbaugh's. Okay. Um, And there is an astronaut, Gregory Harbo, that's around the right age, but none of them, nobody's Wikipedia page has that level of personal information on it. So I feel like Gregory Harbo is absolutely the name that Jim Harbaugh would try to take in the witness protection (laughs) program. (laughs) It's his Joey Freshwater. He would not be that. You're right. That this is a great point. He would not be very creative. It would. Yes. Yes. He would be creative enough to put a fake mustache on. He'd be, (laughs) but not change the name very much. (laughs) And he would be so proud of himself. He'd be like, I did it. No one will catch me. I'm a super spy. No one will know. That's a great point. That's a great point. I now want a James Bond parody, but with Jim Harbaugh as the man of mystery. The man of no mystery. <laughs> it would be like the episode of The Office where Michael Scott did that. Well, I don't remember what episode that is, but yes. Yes. Hello, hiding- I'm Jim Harbaugh. I'm a spy. He's hiding out at the Fontainebleau in Miami like he's in Goldfinger and ordering milk at the bar. <laughs> Deep under yes, I'll, I'll have a milk meat. <laughs> this guy looks more like a Witsec Scott Frost. I just okay. dropped a picture of him in the Discord. <laughs> oh yeah. my. Yeah. That, that is a face, all right. <laughs> Guys, um, I have a friend who texted me. It was when I was out in California. He lives in California. And he said, if a 45-year-old, we work in the financial services industry, and he was meeting with a financial advisor. And he said, if a 45-year-old advisor orders a glass of whole milk to drink at breakfast, does that make him a serial killer? And I immediately responded and just said, ask him if he's related to Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. <laughs> like, like a grown man actually did this. It's wild. I, I think spy Jim Harbaugh orders a virgin white Russian. 
<laughs> yeah, that's probably true. That's probably true. Well, as always, we have to check in our commish. He is not here. He is currently deep in contract negotiations for Brian Ferentz's next extension. We wish him the best. Kamish also wrote notes for us in, in our show notes this week because he is getting antsy. Kamish has asked, can you see Brian duck hunting in Monroe, Louisiana? No, I cannot see Brian Ferentz duck hunting. Can, can I float this out here since Kamish isn't here to yell at me? Uh, yeah. Brian Ferentz, ULM head coach after Terry, after Terry retires? I'm going to leave this in here and he's going to come after you. And you know that. But you at least Terry's have a not retiring. Notes. He's going to AD, and then he will hire Brian. There we go. <laughs> Wait, because so who is Because fail sons hire fail sons. Terry's not actually a fail son, but the joke still stands. I, it was Philip Fulmer who, uh, as AD, it was rumored that he kept hiring coaches that would get fired so he could be interim coach again. Yeah, is that the play there for Terry? No, I, Terry wants to, Terry wants to retire. Send Terry to send Terry to Thailand along with Cliff. Terry and Cliff. Okay, stop. I, I I have this. Okay. Buddy cop. Terry, Terry, <laughs> and Cliff, T- Terry and Cliff, we give them a travel show. Ooh. All they do is go around the world together mm-hmm. and they eat weird things and they go see things. And I'm loving this idea more and more. This is a very opposite attract thing. I like this. I feel like their idea of weird things is going to be like, what's the like Japanese version of Mountain Dew? It's not going to be real weird things, guys. But we, I would, no, we're I the would producers, though. See, we choose that. I would love to see Terry and Cliff like... Again, I feel like they'd have a father-son dynamic, but I, f- I would love to see Terry and Cliff go to, like, the Burger King in South Korea and see w- and try the weird menu items. Yeah, no, I'd like that, too. Yeah. Now, I'm, now I'm just imagining them doing a version of, like, Long Way Round. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only exactly. they're absolutely getting murdered in Mongolia. Like, that's, that's happening. <laughs> yeah. Terry is in a sidecar in this situation, right? Yes, ab- oh, absolutely. Cliff is driving the motorcycle and Terry is in the sidecar with the goggles. Yeah, Cliff is on the motorcycle, Terry's in the sidecar with the goggles, just like, yeah, okay, yes. Cliff's not in a yeah. motorcycle, he's in one of those, like, tripod motorcycles. Tricycle <laughs> motorcycles. It's a great visual image. It's How do you put a sidecar on one of those? <laughs> really far out. I, I guess, guys, we'll start with the big news from today. Brian Ferentz's new contract broke, and we all loved it. <laughs> it started out as a, oh, you know, the goal is for him to get 25 points a game and to win seven games. And then it became clear that it was 25 points a game or he's fired. <laughs> so is the, it or he's fired? Or I, I thought he just got a pay cut. No, no. I, he got the pay cut already. Okay. He took a pay cut this year. And then it's 25 points or you're fired. 25 points. A lot of our Iowa fans were like, I'm so broken that I looked at 25 points and went, that's got to put us in the top like 40 teams of scoring in FBS. We got 25 points a game. That's going to put us in the, you know, the top 20 teams in FBS of scoring. Guys, if you're broken, if you think 25 points is this big, big number, you're broken. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. So he took this contract. Mm -hmm. What was the first offer? (laughs) What was the thing where he's like, well, at least I've gained a little bit of ground. I'll sign this one. I Oh, my God. How do you even start? I I wonder if Kirk is his agent. <laughs> just sign it for him. <laughs> okay, that would be funny. For sure. He's definitely his agent, yes. Is he his agent or is he just, like, signing his homework, like, whenever he was a kid? <laughs> it's a permission slip to continue coaching Iowa football. <laughs> I was just going to say, there's a, yes, a permission slip <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the thing. And it was it was supposed to, Kirk was supposed to sign it, but Brian signed it for him. Since Brian reports directly to the AD, Kirk wouldn't be negotiating with himself in this case, so he could be the agent. Yeah, there's no there's no conflict of interest here. Iowa football, no, no conflict of interest as always. Famously, it's this is one of those things where we'll figure out eventually how to make this funny. I, half of me feels bad because. Losing your job sucks. Working under conditions like this sucks. Yes. This is this is something where like it's almost like I'd rather you have just fired me than said that I have to get you know have to rely on a bunch of twenty year olds to get me twenty five points a year because there are so many things outside of his control here. Like I, I I get that. Having worked with kids before and having to like have my career hinge on the, the whims of twelve year olds, I get this. However, it's also something that's kind of funny. And also, he's Brian Ferentz. He will get a job someplace else. So I'm torn on like how if this is mean or funny. I can't figure it out yet. I think uh, what what we need to look at here is uh, 
I have just Googled the words Illinois offensive coordinator, which is going to land me on a watch list. But it's, it's apparently <laughs> a guy named Barry Lunny Jr. If this yeah. was Barry Lunny yes. Jr.'s contract, uh, this would be really shitty. This would be, like, really uncomfortable and, like, bad labor practice and really uncomfortable. Yeah. The fact that it's happening to Brian Ferentz, it's kind of like, all right, well, let's just see where it goes. So I want to give you guys the teams that they're going to have to be around to get 25 games. So this is last season. They would have to be in the ballpark of teams like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Kent State, Army, Syracuse, Arizona State, Troy, Charlotte, and Utah. That's your ceiling, Iowa. Four of those teams fired their coach last year. One of them won their conference. This is true. Come on, Iowa. Do it for the Big Ten West. Take over a little bit more of this list. That's 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 the part the that, that blows won. my mind. Is that we just there's Minnesota, Wisconsin, just sitting right there at twenty five point four and twenty five point three points a game. Yeah, like that's and we don't look at them and go, that's crazy. We go like, oh, that's that's just Wisconsin, I guess. Twenty five points a game was good enough to get Minnesota's OC hired by Rutgers. He wasn't fired. He voluntarily left for another job, along with twenty five point one points per game for Syracuse. Got him a new job at NC State. I have hives just from those two sentences. <laughs> yeah. I, wow. I, I've been I've been having a bit of an existential day for a lot of reasons, and I am staring into the goddamn abyss with those two sentences. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> it's waving back at you, and it looks like Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. I just want for one of these news media outlets that's doing stories about Nebo babies to interview Brian Ferentz. That's all I really want. The cut, yep. someone... Ask him. Let's it's let's get Brian Ferentz's thoughts on being a Nepo baby. It's That's interesting how the, the culture has like uh, brought Nepo baby, the concept of it, to the forefront at the same time this is happening in the sports world. Totally. I want to get this, Brian Ferentz's thoughts. I mean, Katie would be the first to tell us that this is not the first bad Nepo baby offensive coordinator hire no. that existed. <laughs> <laughs> Fire Jeff Bowden forever. Oh God, that was awful. That was real she bad. Got, she has bow. She has Jeff Bowden years. On her, mm-hmm. on her soul. Chris Rick's years. That was actually the four years that I was at Florida State was Chris Rick's as our quarterback. And uh, it was re- literally at the beginning of Jeff Bowden um, because it was right after Mark Rick left. And it was, God, it was bad. It was real bad. So Kamish put together Iowa's schedule for 2023 and looking at how many points each team is allowing. And it turns out, it just so happens that in the 2023, 2022 season, all of those teams together averaged to 24.52 points per game. <laughs> I don't think you could have planned this any better. One thing in here that is working in his favor that I first saw pointed out by a friend of the program, Lucy, uh, is that defensive and special team scores count towards this. It's not offensive what? average. It that is, is true. Points yes. per game. So, Yes. So that is, that is the loophole. Defensive and special teams points count. Mm -hmm. And you know that this was the part where Kirk really put on his negotiating hat. This may have been, this may have been the, this may have been negotiation. It may have started with offensive points only Beth. Yeah. It may have, he may negotiate it to all points because all points count. Originally they're like, can you give us at least, uh, at least average in the points for the spring game? And they wouldn't do that, but they would do this. (laughs) I mean, the defense is good for 14 a game. So, so last season uh, against FBS competition, including the bowl game, Iowa averaged 18.3 points per game. 15.8 of that was offensive. So the defense is good for, on average, about two and a half points per game. Uh, that varied. They had some where they were scoring 14 points and some where they didn't score. But um, yeah, so they need to get about a touchdown more per game than they did last year. Jordan? All yeah. I want right now is for you to make one of those graphics like we're raising money for the library, like the thermometer. <laughs> United Way. Yeah, that we just keep updating for the entire season as we find out, like, are we above or below the Maginot line here? We're raising points for this special boy. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to give you all an idea about what this actually looks like in all bits of football. What I mean by that is I pulled... All defensive points allowed across every division of NCAA football to find the best and worst teams. So let's talk about the best teams, the defenses that allowed the fewest points of any team. 
Would you believe there's a team in this country that allowed fewer than seven points a game? I straight up wouldn't believe you. The D3 champion, North Central from Illinois, played 15 games and only allowed 100 points in the whole season. That's 6.67 points a game. Damn. Damn, that's good. Wow. My friend does their broadcasts. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. So I was I w- I was following them this year actually through him. So that's been fun to fun to watch. They gotta be oh careful. yeah. They gotta be careful. Yeah. Or else they get St. Thomas. Right. They're gonna they're gonna kick them out <laughs> to the upper kick, kick, kick them up. Yeah, they're gonna get kicked <laughs> up. <laughs> Other teams on this list. D three always has the extremes here. So I got teams like Indicott, Rensselaer, Delaware Valley. These are all teams that held uh, Mount Union, Wartburg, Bentley. These are teams that were in the D three playoffs that yeah, held. Did you say Wartburg. Okay. University of Chicago, our beloved Maroons, held Ooh. teams to 11.4 points this season. Truly Big Ten West. Uh, the lowest of the, the FBS schools was Illinois, who held teams to 20 to 12.7 points a game. Go Bird. Iowa, 13.3. Air Force, 13.8. In FCS, however, do you know who the best defense was this year at FCS? Do we know? The Princeton Tigers. <laughs> yeah, I would not have said that. <laughs> the Princeton Tigers held teams to 13.5 points a game. That's pretty good. Yeah. They're not playing great, you know, great teams, but otherwise, and actually the the team, uh, the, let's say the FCS team who is in the like greater scheme of things that was just slightly above them, 13.5 also, or 13.54, uh, Jackson State. Okay. Dion's boys just held teams down this year. Let's talk about the other side of this. Let's talk about the teams that allowed the most points would you believe there is a team that allowed 60 points a game there's a lot of bad d3 teams so i actually would believe that Uh, this is d2 i almost made a really bad joke there but i won't make it 60 (laughs) points per game 60.7 in fact i was suddenly doing math about teal season (laughs) (laughs) so so i I looked them up because they're on here too but they're not in the top teal is 50th they allowed 40 points a game okay respect for teal Good for Teal. First, we have the Fort Lewis Skyhawks averaging 60 points a game. Oof. The Hilbert Hawks, 53 points a game. The Juniata Eagles, they're a Pennsylvania school. Yeah, they're like 40 minutes that way. Okay, well, they allowed 53 <laughs> points a game. You may need to go over there and talk to them. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> the, uh, the piece I played last weekend that was about the river and the college and was commissioned by the college is called River yeah. of Sorrows. And let me just say it tracks. There you go. We have Lawrence College, the Lawrence Vikings, 51 points a game. Oberlin, going to surprise you guys, not a great football school, 50 points a game, the Oberlin Yeomen. The Simpson Yeoman? Storm. The Yeomen, yes. The Simpson Storm. I actually didn't know that. I've had so many friends that went to Oberlin, and I did not know that they were the Yeomen. The Simpson Can you Storm. say that word a little yes. bit slower? Yeah, that was, that was where I was stopping us. I, like, I'm familiar with the word. The, the pronunciation is what threw me. Is it yeoman, yo, yeoman, yeoman. Is it Y E O? Are yeah. you? Yeah. So y- try it again, very slowly. That first syllable is really what I'm trying to capture here. Yeoman. Yeoman. Okay, but there's two vowels there. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's, th- it's three syllables. I yeoman. Know. Jordan, if I didn't literally know a guy named Yeoman, I'd be with you here. <laughs> yeoman. Ober- so it's the Oberlin Yeoman. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's weird. It's Fine. like Louisville. Louisville's not as many syllables as L- you think. Yeah. Louisville. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. Louis uh, v. We have the Simpson Storm, the Post Eagles, both with about 48, 49 points a game, the Fitchburg State Falcons, the Lincoln Blue Tigers, and the Rockford Regents. One of those teams was straight up a music genre. I'm pretty sure that the Rockford Regents played in like minor league baseball in the 30s. I'm getting season one Arena League. Uh, do we all know who the EFL team? Oh, we're, we'll get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> uh, can does anyone know who the uh, worst defense in FBS was this year? Uh, that... I mean, I want to say Miami, but they have a new coach this it. year. They have a new coach this year. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's not USC is what you're telling me. <laughs> not. It is Colorado. Colorado allowed that 44 tracks. and a half oh. points a game. Yeah. So so Colorado is Real going from that than... to whatever they get from Jackson State. Yep. Interesting. Uh, Still better than Cliff Kingsbury, Texas Tech. But... Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, and FCS lowest is Presby. Presbyterian Blue Hose, 42 points a game. 
Were they still doing the? Uh, nope. No, coach no, never fired. No, he lasted. He lasted one year there. If, so, oh yeah, yeah. If I recall correctly, he wasn't even fired. He just left because he was like, "This sucks." I hate yeah, this. he was like, "Yeah, he was very much like, I don't, I don't enjoy this." <laughs> just walk so, out. You can leave. So there we go, guys. What's the best contract you could, incentive you could give a coach that was underperforming on whatever side of the ball? So incentive? I'm, are we talking like a, a performance goal, like like Brian got? Yeah, like a like Brian got. Yeah. Do this and you get a bonus. I feel like you could give an O line coach an incentive to make your boys beefier. Ooh, like okay. the biggest, the biggest okay. loser, but the opposite. You put them on the scale <laughs> at the end of each mm-hmm. week, and they have to go up in weight. Yes. Yeah, and like, it, and if you make it the whole way to the end, we will give you your entire like the the weight of the entire line in pulled pork or something. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that as an incentive. Yes. In Girl Scout cookies, I like it in Girl Scout cookies. Oh, Very good nice. call. Good call. Could you tie it to the number of whatever stat it is? Like, let's say you're an off, you're an OC, uh, and you go, okay, the, whatever amount of points per game you get, you get that amount of hundred dollar gift cards to whatever store you want. Or if you're in Monroe, Louisiana, you get that many ten dollar gift cards to Catfish Cabin. I don't know. I, knowing most offensive coordinators, I just feel like that's just a huge windfall for lids. <laughs> can I just get them in lid? Just can I just get them in lids? Gift cards? You know that actually most of them are just going to ask for Costco gift gift cards. You know they spend oh, yeah. so much time at Costco. I was going to go Kroger. Yeah. I was so those those, those O line coaches. I'm telling you, if you said that you could get them Costco gift cards, they'd be rolled out with pallets of milk. What pallets? What, just what milk performance and rotisserie chicken? Nothing but that. <laughs> What performance level could you, like, what stat could you give a uh, strength and conditioning coach to, to try and hit? You get points off for Rabdo. I know that. Oh, I know no. if your kids get Rabdo, you get points off. Pallets so, of milk and rotisserie chicken just makes me think of, like, Jim Harbaugh's wedding was pallets of milk and rotisserie oh, chicken. That's all I can think of. He's, he's Everyone stopped. gets a rotisserie chicken on a plate. He stomped on a milk bottle. Lahayam. Except, except he had to take the, the rotisserie chicken and dip it in water because it was too spicy. It was way too spicy. No, dip it in milk. Yeah. The butter so, they cooked it in or the olive oil was too spicy oh, yeah. for him. Yeah. We are Is buttermilk. We're fond of tracking coaching salaries and uh, TBUs, our Terry Bowden units, and right. you know how many times terry bowden's annual salary a given coaching hire is uh i'm gonna say that the ferentz unit now is forty five hundred dollars per point per game because that is how much he is gonna make in bonus if they score exactly 25 points per game we're gonna use that was it how much was it 45 4500 is the is the implication there that you could um if, if you're uh if you're an AD or a booster who wants to improve your offense, that's the amount of dollars per point you have to spend. That's the market rate. So this is a thing that I was working on earlier, actually. And I, honestly, this was just a massive, this contract was a massive gift to me in terms of just like, I can draw so <laughs> many bad conclusions from it with just like linear math and things that don't apply. For example. I wanted to figure out what A&M would have to lay out for their new offensive coordinator to get a similar percentage increase in points per game. Going from 18.3 to 25 points per game is a 36 and a half ish percent increase for Mm -hmm. Iowa. And the incentive that he gets the bonus for reaching that mark is a just under 14% of his contract value. So if we're paying A&M's new OC about 14% of what last year's OC was making, uh, last year's OC being Jimbo, he would be coming in at about one and a quarter million dollars (laughs) and getting 36% more points per game puts them right at 30 points, which is... A remarkably low bar for one and a quarter million dollars. <laughs> I chose the wrong profession, guys. <laughs> we all did, Jordan. Uh, we all I could, did. I could be a and fail we, son we and don't so have, We don't have Petrino's contract details, but it's 
expected to be over a million dollars. So this is not far off from like a realistic performance goal for him. <laughs> Wild. There's some really fun math with Bill O'Brien and Tommy Reese that I'm going to find a way to present. And I'll probably thread a bunch of these out on the Twitter at some point this week, but the Alabama math gets fun <laughs> for, for, uh, for Bobby Petrino. Can you get that many Hooters gift cards or to be like twin peaks? Is there a twin peaks in, in, in college station? There might be. May I make I feel- my annual or, or regular plug for the fact that Hooters air existed. Maybe we can get him Hooters air gift cards. Ooh. It existed until like 2008, 2009. Hooters, Hooters Air being an airline? No, oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it was based in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, as I recall. Oh, well, obviously. Anyways, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> the official carrier of the Coastal Carolina, <laughs> Coastal Carolina University. And Bobby Petrino. Yeah, a certain brother-in-law of mine used to uh, try to say that what he really wanted to pick up for his birthday was thigh miles. So, <laughs> it's great, so great. Oh. Good branding, just good branding. I mean, for one point two four million dollars a year, I'm pretty sure you could, you know, get a plane repainted, you know, some Tennessee orange and oh, yeah. put a big H on the side of I'm it. I'm a little <laughs> upset that John Daly and John Daly Jr. have not relaunched this or figured out some sort of way to give us this back i'd like it back oh my god we we used to be a country that's what you're saying right yes <laughs> a country with hooters air this is the I, real I, state of the union right here yes right. yes I'm, I'm imagining the guy who's taking the uh like he has to get from let's say myrtle beach to topeka and the only non-stop flight is hooters air and he's like well i guess i have to take it you guys, you know what this is, right? It's what Allegiant became. It's absolutely what <laughs> oh, yeah. Allegiant became. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as long as it's owned by Americans, then like you could spend government money on that. Totally. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm great with that. I, shortest flight was Hooters Air. I'm sorry. This Just is happened. the real way to make America great again. If we're there all we being honest. <laughs> Hooters Airlines. And apparently the Hooters AFL team that existed for a while too. <sighs> I didn't know. Oh, I'm going to go down a Wikipedia hole. I found, that, I found out about this. <laughs> there was there was also a Kiss AFL team, if I recall. Yeah, correctly. God, man, <laughs> the AF, the AFL history is just. Uh, we'll do we'll do a whole episode on that because it's great. Yeah, I want to. I I don't want to like. I don't need to be on it, but I can't wait to listen to it. I need to hear that. That's going to be great. To continue on with some of our excitement for Iowa football, Iowa also announced today that they are playing Northwestern at Wrigley Field. Yes. I'm so, I I'm so excited for this. <laughs> so they have fixed the one way thing. Have I don't they? know what they. Yeah, I guess they have because they've are played we putting games. this in air quotes or are they are we really no, fixing? No, they because they've, yeah. they've, 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 they've played games at Wrigley since that game. We're all thinking of yes, and they have they fixed are the problem. capable of playing two directional football there. Great. It still is tight, but they haven't you know caution taped off one end zone anymore are these two directions like in opposite directions or are we working at like a perpendicular angle at some point (laughs) there's a 30 degree bend in the middle of the field perfect i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna drop in the discord the issue they had the first time they played there and why they had to fix it it's one of my favorite pictures i i do like beth the idea of the l-shaped football field the uh or the dogleg football field because it brings up some interesting 17 776 thoughts where like mm. you could throw a ball over the dog leg and hit like a hundred yard touchdown i just posted a picture in the discord of the issue they had with the original game yes. there <laughs> the outfield that crept into the end zone it wasn't that there was no space it was that there was negative space yeah oh. i this like where... the i really just love the uh goal posts mounted on the fence just like stapled to the wall <laughs> yep <laughs> So they have they have solved this problem. It is better now. Uh, I'll post another picture of what their current their most recent setup was. This it's is where you guys need to. Have, you guys need to have learned something from the Canadian Football League, where you have trapezoid end zones, so you could fix this. Yeah. Okay. So Canadian Football League end zones are just vibes because that's not Wrigley. Oh, is that not? That, I'm well, pretty well, sure that's no. It's very not. Oh no. So I'm yeah, so sorry. You're absolutely yeah. right. Oh my god. Take a look at the take a look at the houses with the bleachers on top. I think that might be Wrigley. Is that what Wrigley looks like? Oh yeah, because it's got the it's got the net in the right field. 
Yeah. Okay. No, I was right. Okay. I'm not crazy. Yeah, I, I thought for sure right. that was U.S. Cellular. I've never seen Wrigley look that green, and I watch a lot of baseball. So this is another a shot of it too. Basically, they've gotten to the point now where they they've they have to put the padding up over the ivy so you don't run straight into it. But it is it, you can fit a baseball field in there now. You shouldn't. It's yeah, not like both you know, end zones are you know there's not a lot of run out room on the back of both of these end zones. There is not a single good seat in that entire stadium. Everyone <laughs> is either part. everyone is either facing a, like at a strange angle. Or is a million miles away from the field. I feel like if they allowed us to take lawn chairs in and sit in that green area, that extra <laughs> space, that is the good seat. And that's what I'm shooting for. Can we NASCAR course. infield it and drive yes! an RV in there yes! and sit on top of it? Oh my God. Oh my God. Guys, my parents have an Airstream. Let's take a sickos trip there. I'm, I'm yes. in. I'm very in. <laughs> I will learn to drive the Airstream behind the F-250 to do this. I will very much learn to do this. I have a serious question. Okay. Do you think that they decided the schedule for this game like when this game can happen based off the opponent do you think there was a chance they were like which team is less likely to send a pass through the back of the end zone and run someone to the wall and they picked <laughs> iowa who has yeah. the most defensive touchdowns it was actually the insurance adjusters that set this up they're like all right if you're gonna do this these are your liability pay- payments based on who is actually playing in this game. And they're like, well, what if we put Iowa and Northwestern in there? And the insurance is like, I- they're not even on our, like, they're not even on the adjustment table, guys. I don't know. Yeah, this was originally going to be Texas Tech, Mississippi State somehow. No. Oh, God. Panic. <laughs> Can I? I know you'd like a Texas Tech Mississippi State. Can I talk you back down to an Iowa Northwestern? That sounds like Brian Ferentz's contract negotiation. Like, I would like $2 million. Have you considered get 25 points or we'll fire you? <laughs> uh, to to your point about scheduling the lowest possible score game here, uh, Michael did ask earlier in the Discord if this game would outscore the highest scoring Cubs game. In oh, I don't. The what is the next year? Oh boy, I doubt oh. it. Oh, in the same next year or all time? Yeah, like, because... like no, like will will the highest scoring game played in this stadium next year be this football game or be a Cubs game? The Cubs pitching is not great. Yeah, <laughs> no, I I like the Cubs for this. I watch three baseball games a year, so I have no comment. <laughs> I'm stuck in the hell that is the NL Central. So, like, oh man, hey guys. I am, I am nominally found, an Orioles fan, so <laughs> I have found the highest score <laughs> Good reason in not field to watch. history. What is it? Please. Uh it's not an Iowa Northwestern game. It's twenty six twenty three. Okay. That's that's the highest score in Wrigley Field history. I believe it was Cubs uh it's Cubs Phillies twenty six twenty three. I, I it will be lower than that. It will it will be lower than the highest scoring baseball game there, yes. Brian Ferentz is hoping it's not going to be lower than that. Yeah. <laughs> he, need, he needs that. He's baking on this one. Uh, Iowa last played in a, a Big Ten game at a baseball stadium in 1904 in Cedar Rapids. Uh, Kamish has asked if, play, if, Minnesota playing, if playing Minnesota in the Metrodome from 82 to 2009 counts as a baseball stadium. I disagree with that because the Metrodome was not a good baseball stadium. It was not a good football stadium. It was not a good anything. I mean, that's kind of like Joe Robbie, which is now Hard Rock in South Florida. It's fine. Yeah. It's, okay. It, I will say they've made some improvements. They've like redone some of the decks, but yeah, originally it was not great. I agree. I, I miss when the Jays would play against the Twins in the Metrodome because just the vibe of the whole thing made me really appreciate the Rogers Center slash Sky Dome, which now that that's gone, the Sky Dome is like pointed at as the worst indoor stadium. Yeah. And uh, we, we used to have fr- some friends. Kamish has asked me also to say the names Kirby Puckett and Kent Herbeck. H-R-B-E-K. How would you yeah, even say that? That's as close as he, I think you're going to get. Cool. Yeah, I don't know Herbeck. much baseball, but I do know Kirby Puckett. I know who that is. I know that name too. I know that name. I don't know who the other dude is. I have seen that written out before. I will not attempt to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm going to go K- Kent Herbeck. That seems uh, reasonable. So now, so now we got to do our our big game preview. And because like all podcasts, we are afraid of being sued. We will only call it other things. If you say the actual name, I will bleep you, but you can use whatever other, ever, any other comparison. Are you talking about the label? 
Yes. Perfect. The post grad football national championship. Yeah, the post grad football national championship. Great. Yeah, we I are am... still bleeping liberty. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Bleep liberty. Fuck. That's why I said the uh, I'm, people. Uh-huh. I'm told Joking, the Chiefs and the Eagles are in there. I go birds. I, I I guess I have really no opinion. I was on. I did a media spot this morning for us because now I do media spots for the Sigos committee because we're that kind of group now. God help us all. And went on and luckily they didn't ask me about the Super Bowl. But even when they asked me to say that my prediction, I was like, well, I, I'll say something. I think I said Eagles 35, Chiefs 24. Yeah, yeah. you gave like a, you gave just a standard football last score. It was. Okay, it was that was good. Mm-hmm. Go mm-hmm. I watched that, the media spot qu- briefly before I had to do some other stuff today. And I, the, the one question I caught was them asking what your favorite bevel of all time was. And I was like, I'm glad they're at our level. Oh yeah, that's honest. <laughs> and I and I dropped that it was the Hedo hippos, yep. which yeah. made everyone super happy. So being weird too, I, I represented as well. I have a quick big game story, actually oh, evil yeah. story. Um, so one of my good friends is um, used to work for like Sports Illustrated. She worked in like sports media, that kind of thing. And for a while, actually up until last year, she was in stadium talent for the Eagles. So it was like on the big screen, that kind of stuff, or in house talent, something like that. I can't remember. Anyways, she is now in law school and could not do both. So she decided to not work with the Eagles this year. And she's very, very upset that they're actually in the Super Bowl. And she decided not to be there. She's like, this is the most Eagles thing ever that I would leave. And then they would actually go to the Super Bowl. She's very upset. So Amy, we feel your pain. We're sorry that they're not in the Super Bowl. You weren't there to be with them in the Super Bowl. Is Pat Mahomes healthy? I think he, I think for this for the 60 minutes of game time, he will be healthy enough. I think he's going to be on an Aaron Rodgers level of painkillers here and uh, get through this game. Um, how, how much Toradol are they going? How much Toradol are they going to give him? Enough that you could fell a half dozen moose at 30 paces, probably. <laughs> Did I tell you guys? I think I might have told the story in here. I'll cut it if not. Down the street from me, I have one of those IV places. Those places that like get you, you know, those exist now where you're like, oh, just go in, get an IV. You feel better if you're drunk, hungover. Except what? this place has a, you guys don't have this around you? No. I, yeah, no, I, I am aware of what you're talking about. Yes. This place no, is we have up. a healthcare system. No, no, no. Yeah. No, this is, this is, this is not healthcare. This <laughs> I is mean, just... listen, I'm sure there's a number of places I could go out here in the woods where I could like knock on somebody's door and they'll give me something and I'll feel better. But <clears throat> some of them are portable. They'll come to your house. Like if you have a bad like bug. They'll come and like put not, put a, like an IV of saline in your arm and some other medicines to make you feel better. But they also have places you go to. But this place down the road is super sketchy. Why? Because they have a doctor signing off on things, and in their hangover package includes no. Toradol. So if you just Yo, go in and like be a, like, "Yeah, this is I, a big I'm thing. hungover. Yeah, I'm hungover. Mm-hmm. I don't feel good. Cool. Here's here's a menu." Like cities like Nashville, where there's a lot of bachelors, bachelor, bachelorette parties, like they're like even bigger. They're a big, yes. I, I know what you're talking about, Jordan. I, yes. Yeah. Being from Florida. <laughs> I'd say yeah, no surprise that the Floridians are like, oh yeah, we, I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've never done it myself, but I do, I am familiar. And so yeah, I, this, this place has a doctor that will, that will sign off on tour and all, just like if you're feeling it. So the American it. national anthem is playing in my head right now. And I can't tell if it's out of pride or out of shame. But usually way, both yeah as all good things in this country usually both either way i'm glad to be your neighbor but yeah. not living in your house so yeah i assume he's going to be on his enough tour doll to fill him to fell a moose and that might be the thing i know that chief's offensive line is all banged up still and i know that jalen hurts is playing pretty good football that is basically the extent of my super my oh i almost said it the extent of my big your, game knowledge. your superb amount of knowledge yeah my superb amount of knowledge the superb owl. The superb owl. Yes, that also that's fine. Also, I mean, I don't have a ton of football opinions about either of these teams, other than the Chiefs really uh, have been vampires this year. They've been unkillable. Whereas the Eagles are an interesting team this year. Um, I don't really know what their college comparison would be exactly, but they remind me a lot of the uh, the Alabama teams that ain't played nobody because, like, gotcha. we know we know they're good, but. They've all their signature wins are the Cowboys and the Giants. Yeah, excuse me, sir. They are in a conference with two other playoff teams, <laughs> two great playoff teams that really proved that they were not just in the playoffs because of the NFC goes garbage. Yeah. <laughs> so because of that, I'm like, it's like the Bama teams were like, I know you're good, but I have I have no proof. I I only have faith. I still think the Eagles are going to win this game. I just 
I'm I'm attracted to narratives, I guess. I felt this team was going to do really well from like week one. The Chiefs, I thought, looked really mortal this year, but mortal is not dead. Yeah. I mean, that's it's it's it's, it's going to be a fun game. Kamish has said that his neighbor is an Eagles fan. So go birds, 29-24, Eagles. I think the birds can stop the Chiefs just enough. However, his, uh, Kamish's kiddo loves the color red, so he's rooting for the Chiefs. But also, he's still mad that they beat Jer- Joe Burrow and the Bengals. So. Me too. Me too. Yeah. My TikTok feed lately has been almost nonstop Joe Burrow fan cams. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you guys. Even after he's been eliminated. As a former Philadelphia resident, there would be nothing more on brand than the Eagles rolling into the Super Bowl and then like tripping over their own feet. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the Joe Burrow thing really quickly. My little sister, um, Carrie, is not a football fan, not really a sports fan. She's gotten into Formula One. She loves Formula One. But her TikTok feed is just Joe Burrow. And she's like, I think this happened because I'm related to you. And somehow they knew that you, I love that you love Joe Burrow. And she's like, and now I do too. So anyways, yes, the Joe yeah, Burrow. That's all you need. There was, a, there, was a, there was a trend on TikTok uh, lately, which was like all, a lot of people who don't know anything about football, especially women don't know anything about fo- who don't know anything about football, don't know any players except for Joe Burrow, but they do know his passer rating and all his advanced statistics. And right. his middle name, everything. Yeah. <laughs> What is Joe Burrow's middle name? I don't remember now, but I think it was like, I, yeah, I don't remember. I don't have enough ball knowledge to know Joe Burrow's middle name, sadly. I'm looking for Joseph Lee Burrow. Mm. That's a very Ohio name. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, sorry, he was born in Ames, Iowa, sir. Just an informal poll. We can cut this if we need to, but does Joe Burrow have the best vibes of any NFL quarterback? I think T Law's pretty good. He's extremely up there. Honestly, I, Jalen Hurts has great vibes too. Like, I agree this, with that too. Yeah. That's the nice thing about the Super Bowl is that they're both quarterbacks that I I, I, I like the vibes mm-hmm. of a lot. The Joe Burrow thing I always think back to it's two things. There's one where he's helping a teacher say the Pledge of Allegiance during Zoom school, and he shows it's up wearing a Super mom. Mario. Oh, it's his mom. Yeah, is his mom? I think teacher? I'm pretty sure it's his mom. Yeah. yeah, and he's wearing the Super Mario hoodie, and then it's the cool. other one where he's uh, it's just. Uh, Victoria Dirtbag Queer on Twitter, whenever Joe Burrow is uh, in the news or he has a good game, just goes back like six years and retweets all his tweets from high school. Oh, yeah. And yeah. my favorites are like when he's <laughs> just like got the soul of a poster. He's doing like the uh, the student athlete copy pasta and uh, posts a photo of him in a dress just with no comment. He's got the soul of a poster and the fact that he's balling out is... Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel represented as a poster myself. This is also the same weekend as the Phoenix Open. The also waste known as the Waste Open. Management Open, which I don't they... know if you guys know is the, the best tournament in golf. Yeah. I, I don't like mm-hmm. golf. I'm not even like a, like a golf napper kind of dad. I don't like watching golf just to sleep through it. But, however, the Phoenix Open is basically allowing Arizona State to go to tailgate a golf mm-hmm. tournament. And God, it's good. It's an odd sense of foreboding that this is the same weekend as the Super Bowl, and I believe the Super Bowl is also in Glendale. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. This is like mm-hmm. I feel worried. <clears throat> like this is this is frightening. People are posting the, all the videos from a couple of years ago, the the, the Phoenix Open, just watching forty year old dudes not be able to walk straight, and oh, it just makes me happy. Oh, you guys, no, there, um... there, there, there's no contest on which of these is going to have a better tailgate scene. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a tweet that lives rent free in my head, um, and it's from last year. There's a guy Kyle R. Robbins on Twitter who referred to the Phoenix Open Waste Management Open as commercial banker Burning Man, and I, I <laughs> no, that's perfect. Once a month, I literally not kidding. I, like it I gives me such that. joy because I, like I work in an adjacent industry to that, and it's absolutely all those bros like just oh, God. just yeah, it's, having it's the their Burning Man finance moment. guys, yeah. Huh? Yep. As as the North Florida resident of the committee, this game is what TPC wishes it was, or this tournament is what TPC wishes it yes. was. It's true. Like yes. I don't know how the Jacksonville hosted golf tournament is not this one, but Waste Management Open has its beat hands down. I think the only thing, Kevin, that makes it this way is the fact that it's close to the desert. I like Phoenix is a little closer to the desert. That's the only thing I can think of. But yeah, I, I agree with you. It should be in Jacksonville. It should the, be. The stadium hole is really is really cool to look at. Like, I'm, if I'm pretending this is a normal golf tournament, this is still really cool because of that stadium hole. But then mm-hmm. the stadium hole also has no rules. So 
Yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm going to post it uh, in case any of you guys have never actually like, seen a, like an actual aerial shot of it. But man, 16th hole at the Waste Management Open, Phoenix Open is beautiful. It's so good. That's such a great setup. Guys, can we get a football game in there? That is exactly what I was thinking. Oh, you might be able to. <laughs> arena, arena ball for sure. Leave the sand trap, cowards. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Leave those plants. That's fine. This would be perfect for NFL Street, those games. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, so, you know Pebble, oh God, Georgia fans going to the you know, Masters, everyone, the little, little like, shh, quiet signs. And then you have this, which is just people yelling, oh, Phil, fucking hit it. As loud as they can. <laughs> I want to imagine that when they're not playing the Waste Management Open there, that that just becomes a top golf where you're trying to hit each other. <laughs> <laughs> PVP top golf. Yeah, accurate. hold up, hold up. Now I have an idea. I got an idea now. I like this. TM, 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 PVP top golf. That is our next idea. I'm on board with this. I like it. Perfect. This hole is 162 yards. So. Mm-hmm. Lengthwise, we could fit a football set field in there. I don't I like know width, what the that width is going to get us. I think I don't know how wide, how far from the narrow end it gets to be wide enough to have a football field. I don't see a reason why the stands can't be in bounds. I also I really, really love the idea of having a football stadium that goes uphill towards one end zone. <laughs> we do like, need we need Clemson, to have you think more you're hard for that. running down the hill before the game? Try running up it during the game. <laughs> we absolutely yeah. need to have more thing a more we talked about this a long time terrain. ago. Ground we, need, we need terrain in our football stadiums. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. <laughs> Listeners, I realize that this is a that you know podcasting is a visual medium, and we're leaning into that real hard right now. But you really do need to look up this hole. Like that's a thing that you need to do. So instead of Sicko's history tonight, we're gonna jump into our Substack a little bit. I'm gonna plug our Substack. It's the Sicko's Committee Substack. It's Sicko'sCommittee.substack.com. We link to it, and we've been covering coaches' journeys. And I want to talk about Norm Chow. When's the last time y'all thought about Norm Chow? It's been, um, I'm guess, it, it's been a while, I'm guessing. I can't well, a couple weeks that. ago, because I, I wrote this one. <laughs> yeah, so you wrote this one. <laughs> so we got Norm Chow. And talking about his career history, Norm Chow is Hawaiian. He's from Hawaii. He played football at Utah, however. And then his career starts out in Hawaii, coaching high school ball. He was at BYU for a long time. I didn't realize how long he was at BYU. That's 73 to 99. Yeah. And not as a head coach. He was a position coach for, what is that? How many years is that? All of that. Yeah. 24, 25 years. Oh my God. Then one year at NC State, he was OC at USC, which I always forget. He was OC under Pete Carroll for 01 to 04. That's right. I do remember that. That's what I remember because that's what I was in college. Yeah, yeah. that's what I remember. <clears throat> then he was the Tennessee Titans OC, UCLA's OC, Utah's OC, and then his Hawaii stint, which was not quite what they wanted, but it happened. Then he was he was an assistant at Miracosta High School in California. He was the OC for the LA Wildcats, which was an XL, XFL team 2.0. And if you don't know now, guys, where he's coaching... I'm excited to tell you because now Norm Chow is the head coach of the Helvetic Guardians, Switzerland's professional American football team. <laughs> I love a team named after a font. <laughs> we figured out that Norm Chow has traveled for his coaching career. He had a total of 28,000 miles covered. That's wow. impressive. That's that is lot. impressive. He did not unseat And that's June including Jones. 25 years in one spot. Right. Okay, like, that's the crazy thing, right? Yeah. Most coaches would have had a dozen jobs. Yes. <laughs> but yes, he is the Helvetic Guardians coach. And now, guys, based on so wait, vibes. Oh, how, how far did he go? Uh, 25, sorry, 28,000 miles. So 4,000 miles beyond the circumference of the earth. Oh, I think oh that- God. Hawaii to to Switzerland. I'm genuinely trying to puzzle out which way you want to go there. That'll be faster. Just get a shovel and down. Well, he. <laughs> That's not it how was, it was. It was L.A. Was that, to Switzerland. I don't think that and works. It took me east, but he he was in L.A. when he took the Switzerland job, or at least that's where I had him as his most recent job. He may have taken a year to go back to. Hawaii uh, that'll get you to Botswana, by the way. The antipode of Hawaii is Botswana. Thank you. 
I really appreciate that. I'm sorry. I just, I felt like I had to say that. Have you guys looked at the Helvetic Guards um, logo? No, it's great. It's fantastic. It looks like somebody who's wearing a pharaonic crown, but instead of having the uh, crown of Upper Egypt, it has a football in its place, and it has an axe (laughs) as a nose piece that's pointing blade out. It's spectacular. It's so good. I guess better than pointing blade in. And it's got like a mullet if a mullet was made of the Swiss flag. It's so good. Okay, this reminds me, and I think those those Swiss flags just remind me of the guys who are going to come save you on the side of the mountain, like the ski patrol guys. It's like mm-hmm. the ski patrol is going to come save you, but they're not. They're actually just going to murder you. It's kind of yeah. great. This is spectacular. <laughs> if you told an AI to make a logo, this is what you're getting. Yes, yes this is so great. Uh, I, I, dro- I dropped in Discord the, a, a blown up version of all the European League of Football teams. Right now, I'm going to need you guys to pick a team to cheer for this year based on vibes only. Oh, I already picked mine. Yeah, I already picked mine. You, you I got have one. Uh, I'm going with Sea Devils because I'm in Florida. I love a Sea Devil. There you go, the Hamburg Sea Devils. Yep. Joey, Come where are you at? Come on. I'm going with the Prague Lions because I – and I uh, said this on uh, Twitter. Uh, they are – I love the Czech Republic in Eurovision and uh, their Twitter account keeps being thirsty for their own players. So. <laughs> Beautiful. I like it. <laughs> Beth, who are you on for? Well, I was going to go for the Hamburg Sea Devils because I did live there for a bit, but um, I will Beth, go we for- can be We can be fangirls together. No, you, yeah, you can be fans together, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to move a little bit further down the river, and I'm going to go for the Rhine Fire, my favorite um, NFL Europe reboot ever. Mm-hmm. I can pull my old jersey out of mothballs. This will be great. I like it. Uh, Kevin, where are you going? I was tempted by the Rhine Fire for having the most Overwatch League name out of all of these. Yeah, that's still <laughs> but... very Overwatch League. Um, the fair I, bar and throners is also there for me. I I think we've already covered it, and it's the Helvetic Guards. I do like mm-hmm. the Munich Ravens just for having an absolutely incredible logo. If mm-hmm. I think that Munich Ravens logo is ripped off of Carleton University. Pit Girl is not on here, so I will announce that I am a Baltimore Ravens fan. Um, if they were to adopt this logo, it would immediately boost how much I like Baltimore up, but. I think this is much better than theirs, but yeah, I'm going to stick with the guards and their incredible ball guard helmet axe combination. So I'm a little torn because I've been to a Berlin Thunder game in the old NFL Europe. I have seen the Berlin Thunder in an Olympic stadium in Berlin. I already have a Berlin team that I love that's underperforming. So I don't know that I can do two emotionally. (laughs) That doesn't feel fair to me. So I'm going to go with a team whose city's name I cannot actually pronounce. I'm a Panther fan. (laughs) <laughs> does anyone here know how to pronounce that city because i can guess it but it's gonna be I, wrong i need to zoom in i think it's rockla it's something like rock like rockla or like i think i'm bad at polish oh yeah i'm not gonna guess that because i will i'll butcher it according to my phone it is wrotswaf Wrocław. Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. Yes. Uh, I'm also going to drop to you guys their conference maps because these teams are broken up into three conferences. And what you may have noticed is that they don't necessarily make a ton of sense. Oh, I'm completely aware of this because I, when this first came out and we tweeted out all the national flags that were involved in this, I was like, why is Spain on there? There's no Spanish team. Because I read the Western Conference and there was no Spain in the Western Conference because yep. Barcelona is in the central, like 500 miles east of anyone in the Western Conference. Yep, I dropped, I dropped y'all's map in the Discord. You can see what counts as a central and Western Conference. I think if you called the West the North and the Central the West, this would almost make sense, but also still yep. not really. No, th- this is North, South, and East. Mm-hmm. And then yep. we're done. We're <laughs> I'm going to refer to these guys as leaders, legends, and the ugly one, yes. a la Teen Girl Squad. I miss <laughs> I miss leaders and legends. And yes, I yes, Teen Girl Squad forever. I agree. Uh, if I go leaders, legends, and Luftwaffe, is that is that offensive? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to split. I just noticed they split uh, East and West Germany again. They did. Yeah, there wow. there there are German teams in every division, so. Because Germans love football. If they, were really gonna, if they were really going to split Germany like that, you have to take the Berlin team and put the offense on in one conference Inside. and the defense on the, on the other. Come on, guys. Excited. I'd love yeah. to have a, like, a German, Southern, and Eastern conference here. It doesn't quite work numbers-wise because there's eh, – I guess there's six no, in the it, East it, and there's six in the East. It would because you – 
No, there, there's eight German teams. <laughs> there's entirely too many German teams. <laughs> Perfect. So we have East Prussia, we have the Hanseatic League, and we have finally have um, brought back uh, Bavaria. We did it. We did it. Bavaria is back, guys. And technically, you could probably throw in a lot of Austria into Bavaria anyways. That's Culturally, we're pretty close there. I mean, they tried. <laughs> Prague just sitting there like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and also, shout out to the Milano Seamen who bravely jumped from the Italian Football League to the European League of Football, the Elf. Can we just have a moment where I'm proud of all of us for not taking that team and taking the easy joke? Good job, everybody. <laughs> uh, Prague also, they jumped from the Czech League, which I, from what I understand is much weaker than the Italian League, so this should be interesting. Well, I mean, I'll find out this summer when I go to Toledo. Toledo, the class bowl. Italian Football League championship in America for reasons. I also want to mention, by the way, that the Korfball Champions League is up. I know that everyone loves my Korfball content, so I'm going to Korf, share it Korf, here. Korf, 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 Korf. We've got two Belgian teams and two Dutch teams in the finals. I'm a big fan of PKC Vertom, but you also got the teams like Florent Merlbuke, uh, <laughs> Fortuna Delta Logistic, and Borgenhout Grunwitt. So all the big ones are there, guys. I know you're excited. I know I'm excited. Finals are going to be this Friday and Saturday on the Olympics stream, uh, Olympic.com stream. You can probably get some betting action because I know some of you degenerates out there want to bet on anything. I bet you can bet on Korfball. It's great. Hashtag the mixed gender sport. Hashtag Korfball. Hashtag Korfbull. Hashtag all the hashtags they use. You know what the best part about this uh, this segment is? Is that... Mm -hmm. We, nobody made Jordan try and pronounce those names. No, he I just jumped on his in. Own. I just jumped in. I'm proud of I you. feel like we also need to take a moment to notice that the team Grown Vit, their colors are red and white. <laughs> Beautiful. Mwah. Yeah. Your name is telling me one thing and your logo is telling me something entirely different. <laughs> uh, 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 at Corfball on Twitter wants to remind everyone that there are only four days left to buy tickets. Four this championship so lock them in now jordan do we have it in the budget to fly me out there we don't okay. but i i so, but we have it in the budget for you to watch it on the olympic stream and tweet <laughs> yes because that's what i will be doing hashtag the mixed gender sports welcome to try the travis method and see if you can uh crowdfund it in oh, the yeah. next four days <laughs> this is I your feel like it's Here's your standard IUPUI. reminder that we do have a Venmo. <laughs> yeah, that's this is the final is going to let's see, where is this gonna be at? This is not in Amsterdam. It is in Delft, Netherlands. Delft. Where is Delft? It's by a place called Dane Hoon. Dane Horn, <laughs> sorry. And then by a place called Nutdorp. Oh, it's by Nutdorp. Okay. And and Zodermir. Oh, it's actually it's by the Hague. Which is where I should probably be most of the time, anyways. So, <laughs> crimes against beveling. Okay, Joey, tell us about the hockey thing because I'm really curious. Okay, so the SPHL is the Southern Professional Hockey League. This involves uh, a team based out of Illinois, the uh, Illinois Iowa border, and uh, Danville, Illinois. So, okay. uh, it's very south, Illinois. Uh, they have teams in. Uh, in the South as well, they have a team in Huntsville, Alabama. They have a team in Knoxville, Tennessee. They have a team in Fayetteville. Um, at one point, I think they had a team in Jacksonville. No, they still have a team in Jacksonville. Uh, oh, the Ice my Men. beloved Iceman, the worst name in minor league sports. <laughs> they used to be in Evansville, and then they moved to Jacksonville. That's how that happened. Oh, no, sorry. They're in the East Coast League. The East Coast League, which also includes teams in Alaska. Anyways, the thing with minor league <laughs> hockey is... The, the Florida team is the Pensacola Ice Flyers, by the way. That is correct. The thing with hockey leagues is uh, they tend to merge a lot, and that's kind of what happened with the East Coast League, which now has teams in uh, Nevada, and they had a team in Alaska until recently. And that's also what happened in the Southern Pro League. They sort of amalgamated with a bunch of different leagues. They got teams in the North. The Danville story here, which is the Vermilion County Bobcats. A couple years ago, they had a decently successful lower-level team called the... Uh, danville thrash or the danville dashers okay but the owner of that team kind of fell out with the city council and the city council uh tore up their lease and gave it to a new team in this league uh which is owned by a local businesswoman named ellen tully i don't know a ton about ellen tully called the vermilion county bobcats okay. they 
have not been good, nor that stable. So in the past two years, they have had nine wins. They have also had ten head coaches. Wait. One of them being a guy by the name of Dave Ayers, who is not a hockey coach, but he did. He was the guy who subbed in for the Carolina Hurricanes, the Zamboni driver who beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay, but not a coach in any sense of the word. But they hired him as their head coach. So kind of a team that was reaching for gimmicks and not really reaching for a good hockey team. They have had some problems lately, financial wise. And earlier this week, the league announced there was a a bit of a schedule shuffle. It was a weird schedule shuffle. It moved. They had a game scheduled against Peoria on Friday at home. And they shuffled it so Peoria instead went to Moline to play the Quad City Storm. Then the Quad City Storm went to Vermilion County on Sunday. What Quad they, City? Are, what Quad City are we talking about here? Like what this is, is this Moline? Quad? This is Moline, Illinois, um, which is right on the uh, I forget what city in Iowa, but it's right on the Illinois Iowa border. Okay, okay. And it's it's like in a little circle. It's it's like four cities metro area. I I can't remember for life me the the city in Iowa is the biggest. I think it's Davenport, and that's the bigger city. So that's their market. But anyway, so they drive from there to Danville, Vermilion County. For their game on Sunday. And no one really knows what's going on in Vermilion County except for the fact they've been bad and their fan support is not great. And they've kind of been hemorrhaging money. So they show up for their game and there's not a lot of fans in the crowd. There's a couple. It's supposed to be skate with the team night. So a couple fans in the crowd with skates. And then Quad City goes out for their warm up and there's no Vermilion County Bobcats in the Vermilion County home rink. That's insane. And they finish their warm up. They go off. They come back out, still no Vermilion County Bobcast. The referees are out there. The broadcast crew is there, although they never turn on their mics, so we just get the camera. And Quad City lines up for the face-off. They're, sorry, they stand for the national anthem first, which I think is the most ridiculous part of this whole thing. They stand for the national anthem. Thank the lights God. in the arena dim. Spotlight on the American flag. Whole rigmarole. Still no home team. The, I need to reiterate. This is not a team that like a bus broke down. They never showed up. This is the home team that didn't show up. And so they're out there. They drop the puck. And then they're like, all right, I guess the game is over. That's insane. So, yeah, huh. nobody really knew what happened. I will say one thing. Quad City, the team, did a really nice thing where, because it was supposed to be skate with the Bobcats night. And they were just like, the arena is empty. There's only about 300 people here. But they all have skates, so let's just hang around and hang out with them. So they, they skated with the road team instead. But yes, yeah, so the home team never showed up. There's, like, media in the crowd. Like, it's supposed to be a game. And, like, Quad City drove there. Like, this is bus league. This is not fly out there. Yeah. So I did a little bit of investigative journalism here because I have some contacts within hockey. What I can gather what happened, because no one's really sure what happened at this point. But what from what I can gather... The owner of the team and the player, like there was some sort of uh, non-payment, like players weren't getting paid. And then on Thursday, they told the owner, "We have, you got our game moved for Sunday. That's great. We're not playing. We're we're leaving." And then the owner on Friday came in and instead of negotiating, just cleaned out the offices, <coughs> huh? And left without telling anybody, without telling the league. Sunday morning. The concessions staff, the security staff and all that come into the building and they look around and they see nothing there. So one of them calls the owner and she says, from what from what I've been told, she or someone on her staff says, treat it like a game's happening. So mm -hmm. yeah, they sell tickets, they let people in, and this whole shenanigans happened. And from what I can tell, they the league hasn't announced anything yet. It seems like what they're going to try and do at this point is obviously this team can't continue like what how could you continue after this right but they're in the middle of the season and it's it's not like they have an even number of games against each team left and this is also the level where let's say vermilion county is supposed to go to huntsville in a couple weeks mm -hmm. even though that's an easy win and like huntsville was gonna win that game anyway so forfeiting wouldn't hurt their standings like that's not gonna affect them they're still in a position where they gotta sell tickets like losing a game of revenue is gonna really hurt a team so from what I've been told, what they're thinking about doing is absolutely just slapping together a team of anyone they can get, beer leaguers, free agents, whatever. Oh, God. And sending them on the road 
either in Vermilion County's jerseys or if the owner won't let them, like if because the owner owns the te- owns the team and the property rights, just calling them like the the Wildcats or whatever and sending them out on the road. That so seems, um... what I'm hearing is you guys want to form a hockey team? <laughs> I can't skate, so I can be goalie. <laughs> I'm actually I'm okay at ice skating. I can do this. I feel like okay. I can do this. I'm scrappy. There we go. I see. No, I, 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 I don't like being hit either. So hold up. Maybe goalie's not my thing. I'll be coach. I think there's a non-zero chance here we could uh, convince the Southern Pro League to name this team the Sickos. See now you say that. (laughs) All of a sudden now, now, now we're now I'm about this a little more. I'm about to become the first five foot two defenseman, and I'm very excited about it. (laughs) That's that's Mm -hmm. about she's our enforcer. She hit hard, yes, but she also makes you feel very bad about yourself. (laughs) It's a it's an emotional enforcer. This is the the first step on our journey to bowl sponsorship money is what I'm hearing. <laughs> God. Or or this is going to be us turning into Red Bull where we just sponsor random shit. <laughs> this, yeah, th- this moment is right before the first commercial break in our 30 for 30. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. This is yeah, b- before things go bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, they yeah. were on top of the world and then then they got involved well, with the Southern Pro Hockey League. Well, Joey, thank you so much for doing some background on this because I was confused as all hell this whole time about this whole thing. And that makes that makes way more sense of just something that's just coming apart at the seams. The too long did not listen to me is uh, it sounds like the team folded on Thursday or Friday and they just forgot or chose not to tell the league or its staff or the team that was supposed to come play them on Sunday. <sighs> well, folks, I think... That's all we got for today. Guys, we will talk to you on Sunday. I hope everyone has a great week and get out there and go out there and pick a corf ball team that you really want to follow. Corf, 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 corf. Corf, corf, corf.